think first and foremost we should see this whole new GTLD process in terms of an evolution of the internet. We've seen many changes over time and that that's going to continue. Um, and I think also we should see it in the context that uh, ICANN is an organisation that was formed by the internet community at the end of the 90s, uh, really as a, as a response to several governments, particularly the United States government, having a policy position of wanting to see more competition okay. in the way in which particularly generic problem would domains, so let's say the country codes, which are you know, .au, .uk, .jp, .de, um, operate. And the first round of competition there was introduced in a number of new GTLDs in 2000. There was, an, which is another uh, six, seven. There was a similar group introduced in 2003. So if you say 2000, 2001, it was dot uh, .info, uh, dot .biz, dot .museum, dot .co-op. There's a number there. Okay. Um, and so there's been a round of new TLDs. There was also the introduction of registrar, registry separation, such that there was a body of people who sold you the domain names in a wholesale state. And what is the distinction broader between a registrar and a registry is the person who actually um, uh, operates the rules and the procedures around the string. That the uh, a string is the is basically what's what's the right of the dot, if you like. And so okay. that is a top level domain. Dot org. The dot org. Com, that's after right. the last dot. And that uh, a registry is the person who actually sets the rules and runs that, and often okay. has a registry service provider who provides the hardware behind that, runs the databases and the infrastructure behind that. A registrar is someone who's, who runs a business that basically is selling, especially the second level in that illustration, it's got ICANN, it's okay. selling those onto the retail market. So that's what most of us are more familiar with. You start a business and you go out and you want to buy your web domain, it's, it's to the left of the dot, to the left of the dot org. That's right. Com, you're going to something like a registrar.com or even a host company also sells hosting services like GoDaddy and they yep. act as your registrar. That's right. And since, um, well really since 1999, but particularly since 2003, there's been a policy process across all the constituencies of ICANN, which is government, business, technical, civil society, large input from the intellectual property community, to actually devise a mechanism now where we can have more competition and choice about those top, those next level domains. Um, and uh, both allowing them in Roman characters or ASCII to be more specific and also into characters that are not Roman characters. But that's basically a character set of the world. Something like Cyrillic characters, you might see for Russian, or even Chinese Indian characters. Chinese. Okay. That's right. So what is the impact really for business? The, the impact here and the aim here is to try to introduce more competition and choice. Um, and through that process also to help drive innovation. I think the business opportunities around this initiative are going to be um, include opportunities for investment. I think they're going to include opportunities for brand management. I think they're going to provide opportunities for better brand management, better security for companies in particular who want to set a, a, a global brand around what they're doing rather than being registered in multiple country codes and generic topical right. domains around the world, they may well decide they want to be this not a company and control that themselves. I think also we're going to see a lot of innovation in what people offer. Um, uh, and to give, just simply to give an illustration, um, I've heard people talking about potentially manufacturers actually taking manufacturer component parts as being a second level domain okay. and using this process as a way of keeping a history of each component that gets produced by the, by the manufacturer around the world. So that way of tracking the history of components, you can imagine that in automotive or aeronautical manufacturing right. process. So really much more of a sort of a corporate intranet type application, not something in consumer seeing, but is very useful for managing that flow of information. Right, and it's not, it's not ICANN's job to, sort of, to be say, well, this is, this is what you right. need to do with it, but it's been to try to open up this, this space for innovation and we'll have right. to see what happens. Um, the process itself, the evaluation process, um, is, is fairly straightforward. It opens up uh, early next year, and I'll say a bit more about that. Um, there is a, uh, you, there's a very detailed applicant guidebook that is available on the ICANN website. I would exhort everybody to look at that and read it through carefully. And if it's this quite specific, if it's a business application, a business that has a clear trademark to that name, for instance, it's likely to be a fairly straightforward process. Um, there might be some objections, but um, the 
thought process is put in the application. The application is initially evaluated for about a couple of months. Then there is just for, for basically completeness sake. Then there's an initial detailed evaluation of what's in the planetary of the application. And then if it's successful, it'll be put into the route. And that's a process over something like seven months. But if there is a process um, whereby there's some appeals of uh, intellectual property where people could object to our intellectual property rights, All right. where multiple parties have actually applied for the same name, for the same string. And, and they actually each have a, a claim in terms of intellectual property. We're not talking about somebody who's sort of squatting in that case. That's right. right. Or they may be a community which um, um, has uh, people who are applying for represent the same community. And, and there's rights, there are rules there for how you can actually claim community support. Um, and the community is defined quite, quite specifically. Um, there might also be issues where it looks like it's a very similar string to another string. So you've got right. .com instead of .com, for instance, where you could be confused. Right. Um, and there might also be some limited public interest areas where the Government Advisory Committee of ICANN could raise some areas about some public interest perspectives around the particular application. These have got specific rules around them. Mm -hmm. They have opportunities for either further evaluation or for an objection process. The guidebook goes through some quite some detail. But I think for most companies, this is this is really not the, the key part. For most companies, it really is, um, what do I do with this, for the, with my, how do I see this into my brand? How do I see the opportunity both for further innovation in my delivery of service, either to uh, my supply chain or to my consumers, uh, potentially to my, to my staff? Um, how do I see this in terms of utilization of my uh, uh, brand worldwide positioning of it? And if I've got clear brand uh, trademark and there's no dispute with somebody else, I mean, right. the Lloyd's a classic case, um, then it's a very straightforward process. And you see a lot of a lot of uh, brands moving through this these kinds of considerations, talking about uh, exploring these kind of opportunities for well, new innovation? I hear a lot of companies considering it. I think there's a lot more activity taking place than becoming public. I think people um, are staying somewhat quiet because but there is this opportunity for, for objections and for competing on particular strings. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of silent activity going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Trying to keep that first mover advantage possible. Well, the, the CEO of ICANN recently said that his, the expectation was anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000 applications may come in in this round. Um, a key thing to understand about this round, I think, is that when, when, it, when it closes, and I'll come to the date on that, uh, there's not likely to be another round for quite, quite some time. Right? A few years. I would expect potentially five, six, seven years because it's going to take a long time for this to be worked through. So there is an element of getting in now about this yeah. to a degree. Um, and we should talk about the cost of it because uh, the application process, um, it's not like getting a domain name. It's not like paying $6 or $8 or $10 to get a domain name. This is setting up a real business. There is an evaluation fee of $185,000 uh, which is payable to ICANN. I can tell everybody on this on the screens this is not about making money for ICANN. There was a lot of incredible amount of work gone into figuring out exactly what was going to be involved in the, in the evaluation process. Uh, outside, people worked with us very strongly on this and came up with this number. So this is a yeah. this is a not-for-profit yeah, uh, initiative. It's not for making profit. ICANN is, making... is a non-profit organization and has a clear mandate. Right. As you talked about, it involves things like promoting competition and, and diversity. Uh, on the web. So, so people should think about this a bit, you know, how much do license fees cost when you apply to them for other, all other sort of businesses that right. can be expensive for evaluation. And then there's an ongoing registry fee. On top of that, there is going to be the cost of actually running the registry itself, uh, with, and then there's going to be the cost of, you know, ongoing uh, administrative costs. So these are not Which going to be... Which is quite different than simply administering, so to speak, you know, a given web domain. No, or that's right. brand name .com. Be uh, Taking on that role as of, of a registry you're sort of managing the back end of a kind of a piece of the internet, That's not right. just a website. On That's right. So, you, so you, this really is potentially somewhere from anywhere, I would say, 300000 to 500000 dollars depending upon the specific design of the company and what they want. Okay. This is not going to be a cheap process, but it is an investment. I, I, I often think of it in terms of how much airplay does that get you on TV advertising on primetime TV? Right. And if you think of net terms, if you're it's a brand who's, who's playing on that kind of media buy, that this is you know, maybe not, uh, not, not as a large figure yeah. That's right. yeah, to consider. Um, can you, just before we go to the timing, 
uh, just speak a little bit more about the types of GTLDs. I know there's sort of a distinction between, as you talked about, the sort of a community GTLD versus something that would be sort of a brand name, uh, where there might be, for the brand name, there's going to be clearly sort of one claimant or possibly you've got a couple of businesses in different industries with the same brand name and that's the situation. But mostly it's sort of clear cut versus if I wanted to have if I wanted to apply for, you know, dot football or, or, or dot eco to create a, a home for websites related to, you know, ecological concerns or something, what what does that mean? What's the distinction between this community? Well, you can you can you can just apply for the stream and okay. just just apply as a standard. But in the application process, there's also opportunity to say that you are representing a community, okay. and you've got to be able to prove that that community does gel around what you're proposing, and then there's limitation excuse me, upon what you actually do, so that you actually have to be supporting the, the community. So, for instance, if you were the apple growers of North America and you applied for dot .apple, then you have to be clearly saying that you only had to have the domain names available for apple growers. If you turn around and start providing that, the domain name for apple, apple computer users, yeah. then you'd be in complete breach of the rules. And to show, as you said, that you were that association or something, you were that community, you weren't just you know, a single opera grower. That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. But I would make this yeah, point, and this is right. something of a personal point from when I was uh, in the president CEO of ICANN. Part of the origins of the community proposal is that there are large amounts in the world, particularly in the developing world, where the mm -hmm. trademark rules are not as, the trademark usage is not as extensive. Okay. And where there are long standing communities who just assume that they're, you know, like I could see examples of. Buddhist communities in Southeast Asia right. who, who are recognised in the community for 1,500 years, 2,000 years, right. but don't necessarily have a trademark. Right. And that's sort of trying to address their interests okay. in the process. Well, the so, the, so the application process opens um, um, early in January and closes early in April. Um, and uh, there's, there's no real... I, I, I don't expect there to be any real um, pressure to, for people to have their application on the very first day but they will certainly have to have their application in by the last day. Um, there is some expectation, ICANN has not yet confirmed this, that once these applications have all been received and there's been some initial uh, sifting of them, that there's likely to be dealt in, in, in a batch process. So, you know, there's people talking maybe 300 or 500 at a time until the backlog gets completed. Okay. Um, and it's up to ICANN to decide how that's going to take place. But uh, the bottom line is... Uh, companies who are considering the, the, uh, taking advantage of this new opportunity really need to have their application and have worked out who their partners are, who their registry service provider is going to be, who, who's going to help them in the, in the application writing, uh, what's their internal processes, uh, how they're going to use this, what's their business model, um, how they can show the financial support for the next three years actually running, running this. Uh, they have to work that all through by, by um, the beginning of April. Um, and put the application in with, with that. Otherwise, they're going to be waiting for six or seven years. I, or maybe not, maybe not, or maybe five. But the thing that does strike me is, as I'm hearing instances and of... if you apply, it's not that you'll be... It's going to take six years to go through the no. queue. If you apply and you are accepted, you would expect to probably be able to, you know, be given the green light... The, the first will be going... At six first, months? The first... Yes, you'll get a... You'll get a yes, right. You'll probably get a green light... Well, if you're in the first batch within seven yeah. months, I guess. Okay. But you will be um, um, going through the batch process. It depends. I mean, I think it will be going well into 2013, depending where people get chosen. Okay. Um, um, I would also just make this final point. I have heard of instances of up to six competitors in a particular industry okay. who are thinking of applying for the for their relative, relevant uh, top level domain. So not a brand name, but something like Dot Hotels or Dots. All their, all their, all their own relevant brands, but who actually don't know what each other are doing. Okay. And so there is definitely going to be some issues, I think, in various industries where some move faster than others and find themselves with a five-year five year first mover advantage, if you like. <laughs> But these will be published, is that correct? The list of what's under application? Yes, once so the applications are put in place within some time framework, or within, uh, within weeks of the application process closing, the, the names will so be... So if there's actually a trademark question, you'll, you'll, you'll know that someone has applied for what you may consider your... Trademark. Oh yes, there's quite a lot of trademark protection in that process. Yeah. Okay, terrific.